What's up, guys? Welcome to the second installment of the Neutral Zone podcast. I'm here with a couple guests and my other co-host, Matt Rosinski from Cincy. Um, we have Vanessa Hudson, president of Kent State Dodgeball, Clay Eggleston, president of Akron Dodgeball, and uh, a rookie, Mason, from Grand Valley. Uh, so we're going to start out with a couple quick interviews. Um, we have some things that we need to talk about from the last few weeks in the NCDA. Uh, we're going to start with Clay. Clay, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, I'm um, Clay Eggleston, fifth year senior, um, studying chemical engineering. I've been playing dodgeball since fall of 2018, so fifth year technically, but excluding COVID, like third year. Um, that's pretty much about me. Cool. Um, so you guys hosted uh, the Pink Out tournament. I think it was two, three weekends ago now. Um, yeah. yeah, something like that. And um, there were a lot of surprising results, a lot of conflicting results, stuff that just didn't really make any sense when you looked at it as a whole at the end of the day. Um, but the one thing that we saw is that Akron went 3-0 and uh, with three impressive wins, uh, three pretty convincing wins um, against good teams. So I wanted to ask you, what would you say is the number one factor in your team going 3-0 and uh, at your home tournament? Well, before I answer that, I want to say that was like the third or fourth revision of that schedule. And I had us playing like uh, – we just lost that. Uh, our Mason. Uh, a million different like team combinations – so, and then finally, I settled on Bowling Green, JMU, and uh, Penn State. Um, but the biggest uh, factor, I'd say, is our, our team chemistry and practices. Um, our practice, like, we have a huge roster, like 25 or so. I, I forget the exact number. But, yeah, enough to have a B team. And that really helped us out a lot because we every practice is 12v12, full-on dodgeball for basically two hours straight. We don't do many drills anymore. We just kind of like jump in and start playing and have every team combination in existence so you get chemistry with everyone. And it worked out pretty well. Uh, we didn't really do too much like game planning per se against specific teams like, oh, we're going to try to do this against them. Like, no, we're just going to play how we want to play. And uh, it worked out pretty well. Uh, Bowling Green was, I think I was five to two, right? Um, mm -hmm. I said the biggest factor in that was coming out fast because historically in tournaments this year, we've dropped the first point. Um, but we got three points in like 15 minutes against them. So that was huge to victory. Um, Penn State was pretty much the same. Just start out early, start out fast. And uh, Jim, you know, that, was, that one was kind of a uh, toughest game, I'd say. They, they were a good team. But uh, – I'd say they hadn't faced a ton of adversity this season so far. So I think getting up on them early was uh, the key against them as well. So that, I think that was the theme of all day, was just not dropping the first point because having to play from a deficit sucks. It definitely does. Um, no, that makes a lot of sense. Sometimes just going in with confidence is better than any strategy you could ever think of. Yeah, I think everyone um, starts to uh, believe in themselves in this tournament for sure. Definitely. Uh, if you had to name a team MVP from this past tournament, who would it be? No, no, I don't like answering these types of questions, but That's it's actually a pretty, easy, pretty easy decision. Uh, Jeremy Faircloth, uh, you guys probably don't know him. He was the guy in like the, the blue t-shirt, like the small skinny guy mm -hmm. that was throwing rockets. Yeah, I know. He, got, he pulled his hamstring. He only played for like a half so far this year up until that point because he pulled a hamstring when we were playing uh, OU, you guys, in our first – Turn of the season, so we haven't had him like all year, and he came out and he he uh, he took his time on recovery, so he was able to um, come back 100 percent and definitely saw the difference. He was throwing it through people, moving up and down the court. It was just huge to have that extra arm with us. Awesome. Uh, so looking forward, uh, you guys were planning on going to Penn State, but I know that tournament's kind of up in the air, so possibly an appearance at Western Michigan at the Peter Bro Classic. Um, after this 3-0 and uh, experience at your own tournament, how do you guys feel that you stack up against the competition now, especially in Ohio? Um, so I'd say generally, like, I actually, uh, Caleb uh, Arnold told this to me. He's like, all right, you guys are the t team that ruins people's day. I, I kind of like that. I think that's a good description. Uh, 
I don't know. I have, I have high expectations for us going forward. Uh, we just have a ton of uh, experienced players and strong rookie class last year and this year, uh, and also just a big roster. I think I think we're built to be a competitor this year um, in the league as a whole. And then hopefully, I mean, ODC this year is going to be interesting because OU yeah. ranked ranked number one now uh, in the entire league. Um, yeah, Cincinnati, Ohio State, still still good, still have veteran presence. Um, Bowling Green, I mean, they. They, they tend to play well against teams that they should beat and uh, lose to teams that they should, like we used to be. But, you know, they can – I mean, they took Cincinnati overtime. Um, they took Ohio State to overtime. So they can definitely compete uh, if they put it all together. And they can't took UNC to overtime too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Yeah, it's crazy to me. And then uh, Kent and Cleveland State, Miami um, – they're, they'll, they'll probably be more to watch in the spring semester from those teams because, I mean, just seeing uh, from the first tournament to, like, these tournaments, they've gotten a lot better. So I'll be interested to see how they look come nationals. Yeah, I would love to see a matchup between you guys and OSU now after you've gotten a couple games under your belt. I think that would be really good. ODC yeah. is definitely going to be interesting. Yeah, honestly, uh, I, think, I think we can uh, compete with any team in Ohio for sure. And absolutely. maybe the week, we'll see. Yeah. I guess one question um, I have for you is, is there any other team that kind of reminds you of Akron, a team that, you know, might surprise at a tournament, go 3-0 and against some really good teams that you see in the league so far? That's a good question. Great question. I think um, I think Penn State will bounce back. Um, they had a really tough schedule. Uh I mean, they went 4-0 and in the first one, 0-4 in the next one. I, I think that's pretty tough. I, I don't know. It's tough to judge. I think I think they'll definitely bounce back. Um, UWP is a team that comes to mind because we got the chance to play them at uh, Miami's tournament. And, you know, they don't look like they're going to move fast, but they move pretty quick for uh, for people of their stature. They're, they're pretty big dudes, and they can play. So I, I, I forget. I, I didn't really uh, pay close attention to the results from the UWP tournament, but – I think uh, they're a well-run organization, so they're they're pretty much always a team to watch. Definitely. I agree. Um, so, last question for you, Clay. I know you had mentioned your one rookie, who you even named your team MVP from your guys' tournament. Are there any other rookies that have made strides for you in practice or have gotten better? So, Jeremy's not technically a rookie, actually. Oh no, he, he played okay. a year the the COVID the year that uh, Nationals got canceled, so nineteen and twenty. Okay. Uh, for Kent, he played for them. And now he goes here because he, he took that school off during COVID. But I guess technically rookie for Akron. So, but I'd say, yeah, our, uh, our main rookie, Kyle, uh, last name, Bon Skyo, I think is his last name. I, I should know this, but 25 people talking about first and last names. Um, he He's he's getting better uh, every tournament. Um, he's always had the throw, and uh, now he's just like getting more court awareness, understanding the strategy getting more comfortable playing on the front line, you know, with TJ high and fast up from the get-go. Uh, he did a good job staying up with him, blocking, pump faking, um, everything. He's, he's getting a lot better. He's definitely going to be a player to watch going forward. Right on. All right. Thank you, Clay. Um, we're looking forward to seeing if Akron can keep up their momentum. Um, and, yeah, we'll expect some good results from the Peterborough Classic. Uh, moving on to Vanessa. Vanessa, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? Vanessa Hudson. I'm the president and captain of, of Kent State Dodgeball. This is my fourth year, so this is my last year. Nice. All right. So, Vanessa, um, anyone that was at the Pink Out tournament and was watching the women's game, which I think was almost everyone, you guys got a big crowd. Uh, they saw you put on yeah. a great performance, a couple of clutch catches, a couple of clutch throws. Um, what would you say is your favorite part about participating in those women's matches or women's tournaments? I really think, think it's just about being able to actually see the, the other fortunate, but it's true that you know most girls they don't get either if they are on the court you know their main goal is just to catch and do what they can and be able to actually see what each of these girls are capable of it's really, really to actually show like 
hey, we're here. We signed up to play this sport for everybody being able to come and watch us play and see it. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on to your team, Kent. Uh, you guys are a team that struggled to play matches last year. I think you might have only played, played three. Um, and this year, you've looked a lot stronger. The results haven't exactly gone your way yet. Um, you haven't. I don't know if you guys have fielded a full roster yet, but you're getting there, and it looks a lot better than it did before. So uh, what do you think you could attribute mostly to this change? Um, well, this year, just recruitment and everybody, like, wanting to to get out and last year it was so hard to recruit it was so hard we like that's like you said and we barely had enough to go with eight people so this is a drastic difference than last year and, and it's nice to be able to play you know, as much as i possibly could and so we really just pushed on the opportunity our school gave us. We were out there pushing dodgeball and, and going out and participating in club, club sports again. So it's nice that since 2019, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. Um, do you guys have any standout rookies so far this year that are making an impact? What comes to mind is... Mitchell Porter, he did go to OU, but he did make his way to Akron, and he he he's fun, which is good because player retention is a thing. And it looks like a standout during the Akron pink out though was Andrew Radigan on the show. He really showed what he could do, and I feel like if we can wrangle them and how to actually play it. Um, um, they can be good one, once I another uh, level. Nice. Okay, so Kent is slated to play two new NCDA teams at the the Western Michigan tournament. One who just made or who just had their inaugural inaugural match in uh, CUW. And then another who we haven't seen for a couple of years, uh, Central Michigan, uh, looking to get back on the map. Uh, what are your expectations for this weekend? And are you excited to play these new teams? What are your thoughts? Um, just because I have no idea what they, they look like. like um, I saw a little bit of them. I can watch some more film getting prepared for the tournament. But they have a lot of marks how the game goes, they'll be really, really good. Um, I have no idea, like, all they do on Facebook, on uh, Instagram is post their this practice. So, so it really will be nice to, to see what they look like as a team. I hope they can bring a full team. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think I have anything else. Thank you, Vanessa. For your time. Uh, we're going to move on to Mason, who's a rookie from GV. Mason, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Sweet. No more CMU jokes. <laughs> How about now, Mason? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I go to Grand Valley, and I'm a rookie, so I don't have much to say. I'm I'm already gonna apologize if I disconnect mid interview right now. So far, so all good. Um, so Mason, uh, do you have any highlights from your first NCDA tournament, whether they were on the court or off the court? Um, winning uh, first. I know that sounds very cocky, but um, intense it is. It really took me by surprise. It's not just, just like throwing a ball at some, someone like involved in that in, in, in dodgeball. And I'm I'm here for it. I absolutely love it. that. 
is one of the highlights off the court. Um, we went to a restaurant as that is some of the best bacon I've ever had. So, oh yeah. Um, are there any teammates that you have specifically that have helped to make your transition into tournament play easier? Who have kind of taught you the game? Um, pretty much every returner that helped me learn the game. Um, obviously Ben. Ben has helped a lot. You know, whether he wants to throw after practice sometimes or um, but, but uh, you know, Owen's helped me with with throwing as well too and catching. But overall, it's been a very, very welcome group of people. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I know you kind of touched on this before, but did the level of play that you saw at the pink out tournament, did it kind of fall short match or exceed your expectations? Um, um, definitely, um, Let's refresh Mason. Okay. <laughs> um, level of play met my expectations. I knew going in we were going to face some, some really good teams. Uh, uh, we played you and. Oh, I uh, I think it was Ohio State, JMU, and uh, Penn State. Yeah. Penn State, State, yeah. Every single one of those teams has my respect. Um, definitely, I think it exceeded my expectations, the level of play we were playing. And uh, our greatest game that whole weekend, too. But that doesn't take away from the level. So. Definitely. Um, so do you have any personal or team goals for the rest of the season? Um, obviously a team goal is going to be personal. I just want to continue to learn and grow as a player. You know, there's always room for improvement. That's, that's one of rookie of the year would be pretty cool, but I've got a lot of work to go to get. That. Awesome. That's good to hear. Um, okay, so thank you to our guests for their contributions. Uh, they're going to stay with us, though, as we kind of wrap it up with um, just a little bit of a total league overview so far. We're going to go in reverse order in the standings and kind of just give our quick 30-second thoughts on different teams. Um, so let's start with 20th, which is Kent State. Um so we did hear a little bit already from them, uh, from Vanessa about the about them, but we know that they're a young team who struggles to put a full roster on the court sometimes. But if they did, they'd be a lot scarier, and they're making definite improvements. Uh, anyone have any other comments? I think it'll be exciting to see them play uh, CUW, which will be a really cool match to see with two younger squads who are still developing and. Just starting out as a club, go at it, which would be a cool match. Absolutely. Um, has anyone here played University of Virginia yet this year? No. Yeah. Um, I know they've had a couple close games with UMD. They just played a doubleheader with them. Uh, I know they took JMU to overtime in the first East Coast tournament of the year, however the hell that happened. Um, but, I mean, from those results, it seems like when they're on, they can be on. Um, but I just definitely want to see more from them. Uh, number 18 currently is Cleveland State University. Uh, Clay, Vanessa, I know you guys have played Cleveland State. Any comments? They need a few arms. Um, yeah, sure. Definitely a, a catching team. Some arms. Um, take some points, and catches a line. So that's, that's a lot to say. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be scary when when he comes back if he comes back for the spring semester, and it's definitely going to be he'll definitely be the scariest and best player in the league without question, I think, from anyone else. So um, it'll be a much different Cleveland State team with someone as dynamic as Leo playing. Yeah, we're all looking on the horizon for Leo. They're right. a really good. 
really good catching team. So once Leo comes back, they will probably be able to move up in the ranks of a few spots, no doubt. Yeah. I think it'll depend on how they can protect Leo too. I think will be the biggest part about CSU because I know our game plan going into if we play CSU again will be every gun pointed at Leo. So just being able to protect him or at least, you know, be able to get some of our better players out in exchange, uh, I think would be a big part of improving their team with Leo. Yeah, I agree with all that. Uh, 17 is Georgia Southern. I don't think we need to say anything about them until they play a match. Uh, number 16 is Maryland. I played them last year at Nationals. Um, I don't know. I don't think anyone here has played them yet this year. Um, kind of same thing as Virginia. When they're on their day, they can uh, they can put up fights with some of the best teams in the East Coast. Um, it was certainly wasn't an easy game when I played them at Nationals last year on day one. I know they graduated a couple of good seniors, but um, yeah, we'll look for them to make some more strides. I know they're coached by uh, Daniel Fernald. Uh, former president of that team. Uh, Miami is 15 right now. I actually have not played them yet this year. I've heard they are much improved, though. Uh, Clay, you're smiling over there. Oh, yeah, we were down to nothing to them at uh, JBBB. Um, yeah, they're, uh, they're a scary team to play, not going to lie. Um, okay. I, they're going to be a lot better in the spring, too, so be careful if you play them. Yeah, they got they got some Excellent. really good players. Catching. Yeah, a lot of role players too that know exactly you know what their role is inside of the team, whether that's catching or being the main arms for their team. And they definitely like to you know play transition right away too, which is I think is really important with all the teams like who are in the top ten like to either play transition or know how to play against it. So I think they can compete with that style of play. Awesome, that's great to hear. Uh, Fourteen is North Georgia. Moving on, um, 13 is Saginaw Valley State. Um, I actually played them this year at the, the UK tournament that they hosted. Um, and they're a solid team. They they could definitely be a bit deeper. I know once you kind of isolate Joe Barber and Cole Machiella and you can remove them from the game, they're definitely less of a threat as a team. So, um, But when those guys are on, they can get their fair share of outs and they can put their team in a great position to win. Um, yeah, that's all I got for them. I don't know if anyone else has faced them this year. No, we faced them last year at Nationals, and it was the same type of deal. They just need a few more arms, a little more depth to be able to protect their main players, and, and we yeah. can definitely more of a threat then. Yeah, they're a little top-heavy, but they play as a team, so we'll look to them to maybe see a couple rookies take the next step. Uh, number 12 is Bowling Green. They're an interesting team, definitely, this year. Uh, I played them at John Better's, Bob Capananza, and we beat them 5-1, to one, but it was probably a closer game than that score would suggest. Um, all of the points were at least relatively close. They've got a lot of athletes. Um, they're led by Evan Brown. Um, kid's got a rocket for an arm. He can make clutch catches. Uh, so they definitely have good leaders out there. Um, I think they could definitely learn to play together a little bit better. Um, I know Akron's played them. I don't know about UC and Kent. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on Yeah, Bowling we Green? played them. Yeah. yeah. Based off the, we've only played them once. They seem they seem to have playing as a team part. It's definitely something they need to learn how to do. They didn't have any issue breaking new team but um yeah i didn't see anything that was so yeah they took us to overtime um in our, our third match we, we were trying to get rookies involved a little too early so i think we uh just didn't didn't put out but then we you know we were actually worse trying we still were only you know table get one point on them really quickly and they definitely play a little slower of a pace which i think really benefits them, which they like to, you know, sit and make catches on the back line and then make pretty timely throws. Um, so that's just their play style. I just think another semester of getting to play their play style is definitely exactly what they need. 
for sure. Yeah, they're a young team. They lost uh, definitely their two biggest contributors last year, Brandon Feltner and Cole Wilson. Um, Evan's doing his fair share of making up for what's lost, but uh, they could use some for sure. Just more experience, I think, would be good for them. Uh, 11 right now is Wisconsin Platteville. Um, they're a team who I played last year. Um, I don't know too much about what improvements they've made, but uh, from what I know, they're just a team who they do all the right things. Uh, whether it works out for them all the time is another question. Um, but they're going to play together, and they're going to put up a fight no matter what. So um, if they can get a couple more guys to take the next step, get more confident, I think they could be a threat for sure. Yeah, I think they're pretty experienced, too. I don't think they lost too many people uh, from last mm -hmm. year to this year. And they were a very tough team that we played in the first round of the tournament, which, honestly, we weren't expecting that much. Um, but it was a lot harder of a game than we thought it was. I think just the only struggle for them is obviously they're from Wisconsin, but coming up here to play different tournaments is just, I think, what their focus should be on because they, they have a lot of talent. And a lot of them even play in – you know, the USA dodgeball in some different leagues, so they're able to get that experience, but they'll be scary around nationals. Yeah, they're well run organization. Definitely. Uh, moving into the top 10. At 10, we have Towson sitting pretty. Um, I Their results have been interesting this year. I think they've played close games with a lot of the East Coast teams. We've got some wins, got some losses. Um, I don't know if we've actually seen them at full strength yet. That's another question um, that remains. But uh, I played them last year. I know they've lost a lot, like a lot. But uh, we played them last year at Nationals, and they, they kicked our ass. Um, they beat us. They're a really good team. They've got athletes. They're going to they're gonna figure it out. Um, I don't think anyone here has played them yet. This, they haven't really come out west. Uh, but any thoughts on Towson? We had a pretty thriller at overtime game against them last year during Nationals, so uh, definitely have all the respect for their team. Uh, I know they lost the Freedmen's, which were the big arms on their team, so I don't really know who's filled that gap, but they're a very similar team to Jamie as far as they have athletes that they just keep coming with every year and they're able to replace everyone that they lost and still have arms. So I'm not really too worried about Towson. It's just being able to play games. Yeah, for sure. They need to get on the court. Um, number nine, we have University of Nebraska. Um, they're a team who we played in the first round of day two nationals last year, and we won a close game. Um, I can only assume that they've gotten better this year. I don't think they graduated too many people, at least not their super key players. And they had a lot of good rookies last year, so we'll be looking for them to make a next step. Uh, they've been dominant in anything that they've done so far this year. Um, against who is another question. But um, I think they – I don't know if they're going to the Peterborough Classic. Uh, does anyone know that play? Uh, Okay, so yeah, we might not see them again until the second semester, which stinks. I want to see them play um, some good team. Uh, but UNL is a team that you can throw, you can have the hardest throwers in the league, and it still won't matter. They'll, they'll catch anything. Um, so you really have to be on your stuff when you play them. Uh, but we'll look for them to make the teammates and be a threat national. I think that they also are very confident in their play style and themselves. I think they have really high expectations, which I think is the biggest thing for those teams that don't get to play us, them and UWP, is they know they can compete with us, and they've done it before, whether it's Nationals last year. So I think just knowing exactly how they want to play and playing it no matter who they play against is the biggest key for them. Definitely. Uh, number eight is Penn State. Um, they've come a long way since being ranked number one just a month and a half ago. It's not a dig or anything. It's just the, the way it goes. Um, they had an extremely tough schedule at, uh, at pink out. They, they wanted it and um, they put up fights against all the teams they played. It wasn't easy, um, but they, they did go on four. Um, I did they do JMU or no. It was all West team, all Ohio teams, right? I think. <laughs> 
It's like yeah, Grand Valley OU. Since oh, the, Grand Valley, right, right, right. Um, so yeah, they couldn't find too much success there, but they are possibly, maybe, still hosting a tournament uh, this weekend. We'll see if that happens. Um, we'll see what the results are from there. Um, but so far, I've been at uh, Pink. Plenty of arms, plenty of catchers. Um, they just have not figured out how to play well together yet, and they oftentimes will throw three or four four balls at a time and lose ball control just like that. So, um, yeah, that's the yeah. biggest thing, I guess, from when I, we all played them. But at least I think we played them first right away um, in the first game, and that was something that we kind of watched their previous games, and that's what we wanted to focus on and. We did that, and it's just no matter how much talent you have on your team, it's hard to win a game when you have two balls on your side for the entire point. So I think if they can do that, they're just going to they're going to be just as scary and have the same expectations as they had going into that tournament, which I think is being one of the contenders in the league. And I, I, that's just the biggest thing they got to have ball control. That's all they really need to work on. Yeah, Clay, anything? I know you guys played them. No, that's pretty much it. They just need to work on ball control. Yeah. All right, moving on to number seven, Ohio State. Um, most recently, we've seen OSU, uh, I think they went to overtime against uh, Grand Valley. Or was that Penn State? I, yeah. I don't know. It was a close game their way against Grand Valley. Against the defending champions, they played really well. Um, and then they uh, – I don't actually know who else they played that tournament. It's something they went to overtime against uh, Bowling Green. That's uh, right. At the end of the day. That's right. BG almost came all the way back, and then OSU beat him in overtime. So OSU has been a team that's kind of gone up and down throughout the year. They often turned um, a really big lead in points and then failed to keep it up for the second half. I know that happened when we played them at their tournament, and uh, it came back to bite them against us. They were able to figure it out against Bowling Green, but um, definitely a team that has the talent, and they work together, but I think – just a mindset thing for them sometimes. Anyone else? I know you guys have played them, I think. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. I think they come into each game well prepared. I think they prepare for each game really well, and they come out strong. I think all the points that we've played against them have been really competitive. It's just, I think, being able to close it out and just overall having their big players make really big plays each point, I think it's just something – that they need. Obviously, Ginsburg's been injured, and Kemper, who is an absolute beast, and once I, I don't know if he's pinching now again, but he's going to be one of the best players in the league. And I think with both of them healthy in the second semester, maybe even by ODC, that it's going to be a different OSU team that we're going to be going up against. I agree. I'll also add that um, rookie, all rookie, t uh, all rookie player Derek. Kemper last year is also looking to be back from his arm injury soon. So that's going to add two arms to their team, and which is something that they have maybe been lacking this year um, above anything else. They have plenty of catching. They play great transition, but that one or two arms, those one or two arms might put them over the edge. Uh, moving on to number six, Akron, a team that we've talked a lot about today. Um a team who's the hottest team in the league right now um, had a super performance at their home tournament, and um, we'll we'll be looking to we'll be looking to see what they can do. More the same. Um, what's that? That's what, tell, that's what I tell everyone after we win points. You can ask anyone on the team. All I say is more the same. <laughs> um, <laughs> number five, Cincinnati. Um, Matt, you want to talk for a minute about where you guys are at right now? Yeah, um, I think we're pretty much – I think we're just trying to improve. We know exactly really what we need to work on. Um, we have a lot of movement within our roster. I would say, like, spots, you know, 6 through 15 or 16 are really, really competitive for us. And I think for us, our rookies are starting to come up and challenge some of our bigger role players from last year. For, so just figuring out, you know, who we want to give – Ball, ball priority too and you know where we want to put people on the court is the biggest thing we got to figure out because we're, we're beating the teams we're supposed to beat but we want to be able to you know obviously BW is definitely a big one but just you know we feel like we can compete with everyone and I think we proved that last year and 
we haven't really had any blowout losses or anything, but just playing consistent is our, our biggest issue and not taking easy outs. Definitely. Still undeniably a top tier team in the league, no doubt. Um, number four is Michigan State right now. Um, I think a lot of people in their power rankings would probably have MSU as the best team in the country right now. Um, but we, we're uh, under the jurisdiction of math with our rankings. So they're only at four right now. They've only played three games. I know they're going to get active this weekend at the Peterborough Classic. But uh, MSU, for anyone that's played in this year or last year, MSU, uh, we know, is a team that just has so much talent, so much arm talent. Um, and they do play really well together. They're really well coached. Um, they're just a really tough team in general. Uh, I would say definitely the team to beat in the league right now. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? I just want to see more of them. That's all I was going to say. Yeah. I just want to see more. Playing tournaments, but I think they definitely, they definitely prioritize, you know, their players, you know, health and being ready for every tournament that they play in more than anything. They don't like going to tournaments understaffed, I, I, it looks like. But, uh, no, they're definitely the team to beat. And playing them, I feel like, like you said, they're all around just they have no weaknesses or anything that you feel like you can, you know, attack or go after because they just have every facet of the game pretty much covered. Yeah, I agree. They're tough. Um, they're damn good. Number three, we have James Madison right now who um, came out to the west side of the league for the first time this year and had interesting results, I would say. Um, they beat OU, my team, in a really close game at the beginning of the day. It was back and forth. Um, they got the best of us, though, and then also went on to beat the defending team 5-2. to two. So that was kind of out there. And then to end the day, they lost to Akron, who was a team that we're not expected to lose to. So it was just kind of all over the place for JMU. I feel like that's kind of how it goes with them a lot of tournaments. Um, they either get off to a really fast start just because they're freakishly athletic and they can just kind of play how they want and force other teams' hands. But sometimes that uh, that strategy doesn't work as well towards the end of the day when your arms are getting tired or teams are starting to figure you out. Um, so we'll see if they switch anything up. I doubt it. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were just when they played us. That's all I'm going to say. Like, we were ready to play, like, three more matches, and they were, like, done after the second one. I mean, they, they did play Grand Valley, so they, they definitely had their work cut out for them in the game right before ours. But, like, that was the big difference is we were, like, running around, and they slowed down a lot, which is kind of what they relied on. I think, yeah, yeah. To Akron, if there's any team that actually does match up well with JMU, it, it is Akron because Akron likes to sit back and, you know, get solo throw that and just absorb the ball which they're very, very good. They're the best in the nation at doing that. And JMU trusts all their guys to, you know, make really good solo throws to be able to get people out. And I think it was just the battle of that, and they were exhausted. But JMU, I would say, in my mind at least, since he views it as the other really big team to beat right now um, outside of MSU, because JMU 1-12 to is scary. They all got – they all throw gas, and they can all catch. Yeah, they don't have many weaknesses. Um at an individual level at all. Uh, but the stamina things are it's a big deal for sure, especially on day two of nationals when you're playing what could be your seventh game in like less than 48 hours. It's crazy. So uh, definitely something to look out for, uh, see how they can respond to that. Moving on to number two, we have Grand Valley State. Um, so we saw GV in action for the first time this year. I think, right? Or did they play? In the we played. Oh, they did. Yeah, they did. Do the, yeah, the Saginaw, the Saginaw tournament. Um, first, first action against any Ohio teams or out of region teams. We saw them in a close game against OS to come out on top. We saw them in a close game against Penn State come out on top, and then we saw them lose pretty handedly to uh, to James Madison. Um, so. Definitely not exactly what the rest of the league was expecting. Um, Mason, do you have any thoughts? I don't know. You're in here right now. Oh, man, there you go. I guess. Yeah. Mason, any thoughts? Was there a question before? Or? <laughs> it was just um, 
I was kind of just recapping your guys' performance at Pink Out and just wondering what you thought, if it was under your expectations or the team's expectations, I should say. But um, we've we've been working. So um. very insightful. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, GV is gonna figure it out by the Michigan Dodgeball Cup and oh, yeah. Nationals. They always do, and I think they're gonna be getting Josh Hill back, which will be scary for the rest of the league. Too. Huge. Um, yeah, I still think I don't. There's so many title favorites and contenders this year that, you know, I think everyone in the top 10 has their sights set on one thing. And I think that's really sweet this year because I don't think we've had that any other year where anyone in the top 10 is going to be a really hard matchup. Yeah. Uh, definitely a lot of parody throughout the league. Uh, more than I've ever seen or heard of so far. Um, but yeah. Uh, my team, OU, is in the number one spot right now. Um, the math worked out for us with JMU losing to Akron. That was the decider. Um, we'll take it, but we're not satisfied at all. Um, we've had a couple losses this year that we did not like at all. We didn't like losing to JMU. Uh, it was a really close game. And um, also, we've lost to Michigan State this year, who and they just they whooped on us. Um, that wasn't even a close game. So uh, we're still improving on some stuff, but we, we feel good about where we are right now. So that'll be it for the standings run through. And unless anyone has anything else, any other comments, I think we're probably going to conclude the podcast here. I got one question. Uh, Clay, what's your hot take for the rest of the season? Give me something really hot and juicy. Really hot and juicy? Yep. You got to have something. You've been in the league long enough. Yeah, I have been. It could be about uh, yourself. You don't care. Or anyone. I, I don't know if I want to single anyone out. I'm trying to think. <laughs> single anyone out. I mean, well, I was going to say, like, we're the best catching team in the league. But I don't know if that's that hot of a take. I mean, it's almost factual, but. I don't I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say PJ MVP. Ooh, that's a hot take. I like that's it. That's a hot take. I don't hate it though. He's a beast. Uh, all right, fair enough. Uh, yeah, he's. Uh, there's a lot of people I've seen play, and you know he's good. He like he goes to practice with us like six to eight, and then he'll play hockey from like eight to ten within like a hockey league or something. Like <laughs> the dude's just always running around, crazy, freak athlete. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Um, I had a good time. And good luck to all of you in your coming matches. Um, I wish nothing but the best. Thanks for coming. And thanks to anyone who watches the second episode of The Neutral Zone. All right. Thanks. Enjoy being number one. <laughs>